Welcome Fly Fish Fooders, it's Cheech with Fly Fish Food and I have a cool hook in the vise. This is an Arex. I think that's how you say it. Or Arex. Is that how you say it in Swedish? Arex. The eight. I'm going with the, the silent eight. Arex. Arex. Oh, geez. I speak Spanish. That's it. It's not a Spanish name, so we're calling them Arex. Anyway. The 511, it's a cool curved shank hook. It's a little bit beefier than your standard hook. And I chose this hook on this fly because this is kind of a skating fly. And a lot of times when you skate caddis patterns, you get really savage takes like Curtis after a freaking uh, bratwurst or something. Just can't handle it. Anyway, so we're going to tie a fly on this one. <clears throat> this one is a kind of a skater. I'm going to dress this one. This is a Montana Fly 8 dot thread in chartreuse, and I like this chartreuse because it seems to be the brightest of them all. So, kind of a cool color. And I'm going to dress the hook. I'm going to unwind it first, but I'm going to dress it down the hook shank just a little bit. And back here in the very back, I'm going to build up a little bit of a bulb out of the thread. So once I have the bowl built, I'll take my thread back up forward. And I'm just going to take some resin, just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to work that in there. <clears throat> and make a little sack. If anything, it's just a hot spot. So there's our little bulb that will show in the back of this fly. You can tie this one in tan, uh, brown. What's the other colors? Olive, those kinds of things. And I've been tying just with uh, Nature Spirit Snowshoe Rabbit Foot Dubbing in brown on this one. I'm also going to add a little bit of a rib just to kind of give a little bit of segmentation. And I'll do that with small copper wire. So from here, I'm just gonna take the dubbing and it's a little bit buggier of a dubbing and I'll make the body out of that so there's our body I'm gonna counter wrap this wire just so it goes against the grain of the dubbing that we put in there and it will show up a little better and then I'm just going to helicopter that off. And from here, I'm just going to pick out, tease out this dubbing just a little bit. Doesn't have to be too much. What were you tying? Look at that. It's Balanced like, damsels, baby. Stupid. As long as it's not black ice dub, then you know the chimera touched this fly. And then we'd have to throw it away and start over. Okay, so I really hate tying beards on flies, and caddis flies tend to have beards, and that means hackle fiber is just on the bottom. So I decided to forego the beard altogether on this fly. Instead, I'm going to wrap a soft hackle of partridge on this one. So here's my partridge feather. Let's get a good shot of that. And I found for me the easiest way to prepare this feather is to pull the fluff off and then I have these little TMCO tweezers that if you can see the inside of that little tip they finish they like uh, left a rough edge on it so these really grab stuff well so I'm just gonna grab that by the tip and that way I can preen the feather down and get a tie-in point. So my feather's tied in right there. Trim off this junk. And from here, I'm going to wrap my partridge forward. 
and I'm just going to grab it by the hackle pliers very gently. Son of a! You're going to have to delete or beep that out. So if you break off your partridge like I did, you can just grab it by the tip by your tweezers and tie it in again. See that? It's almost like I meant to do that. There we go. I'm all fingers right now, but I'm just trying to keep that feather peeled backward. There we go. These are the new Dr. Slick razor scissors, and they do have one serrated edge now. Can you see that? There you go. You can see the serrations. And on this one, no serrations. Fun fact. Okay, so now that we have the soft hackle tied in, you know, yes, you could fish that fly right now. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a floaty machine. So the back half of the fly, all these materials are designed to absorb water, which is not good if you want to skate a fly. So I'm going to take some EP trigger point fibers, and this color is March Brown, which works well with this color of, of dubbing that I've chosen. And I'm just going to take off a, a, an amount of that and tie it on one side of the head like that. And then I'm just going to double it over itself. and run it along the other side. So from here, I'm just going to trim those off a little bit longer than the body. And so that's going to give you a, a bit of flotation. So this is like a skittering caddis that's kind of, you know, causing a wake that the fish go after. Now to add it, to add extra wakey stuff, I guess, extra flotation and, and water pushing ability. I've taken the Hopper Caddis Ant River Road Cutter in size 14, and this is just a piece of brown foam. It's kind of a light brown, uh, two millimeters. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on here, not quite as long as those wings, and I'm just gonna tie that in right here and then I'll whip finish in front of it. And instead of cutting that off flush, you're going to want to leave kind of a, a generous head on there so that where your line ties in is going to be right underneath where that's going to start pushing water. So recommendations on fishing this one are to use Floatant. I like Loon Aquel or Tiemco Dry Magic a lot. And cast it out, keep your rod tip high, and then just kind of swing it down through the current right on top of the water. Anyway, that's the skate bait. Fish it and enjoy yourself.